Today is April 30th, 2009, and I'm going to talk about Iceland because I made a video called uh, Iceland Collapse Disaster that's been watched a lot, and a lot of people in Iceland have seen that video, and, and I want to clarify a few things because um, I'm real sorry for Iceland, and I'm sorry for the Icelandic people. It's important to be specific here because I'm not sorry for the Icelandic state, and I'm not sorry for the Iceland central bank and, and uh, statism and, and the growth of the state and inflation and printing money. All that I'm not sorry for, but I'm sorry for the Icelandic people. These are great, solid, trustworthy, uh, you know, good people. And uh, it's a great culture where we have a lot in common with the Norwegian culture. And, and, and there's nothing wrong with Icelandic people. But uh, Iceland has become a symbol of the excesses, and the collapse of Iceland is something that I predict will be uh, followed in a very similar pattern by a number of states. Iceland is just so small that it imploded on itself very early in this process. There are lots of other countries that are going to see similar things happening. Uh, because the indebtedness and um, the leverage has been extreme in a lot of different com other countries. Uh, it's just that the bubble hasn't totally popped yet, but it will eventually. So Iceland really is a um, frontier state right now, and, and what they come up with as solutions is going to be real interesting. And um, the Icelandic people has um, a an optimism and uh, belief in the future, and they, they have this great word for it. I don't speak Icelandic, but but I'm, I, I hope someone in the comment field can can elaborate on that. He he would or or what it is um, that um, explains an attitude of, of go get going and uh, can do and finding solutions to to problems. Um, but I also have to say that I visited Iceland in 2005, and it was it was so expensive, it was ridiculous because the currency was just propped up so much, and I find it kind of weird that most Icelanders they uh, they believe they believe this was real. They believe that you know Iceland was the new center of of the, the world or whatever, and that everyone should come to Iceland and put their money in Iceland and. Let's build, you know, huge uh, skyscrapers in downtown Reykjavik, and it, it, they should have realized somehow that this was crazy, and this can't last, can't possibly last. And I, I was in a meeting there with economists in 2005, and uh, the meeting was at the uh, utmost luxury hotel in in Reykjavik, a regular five-star hotel. I, could, you know, I, it was so expensive. I. I didn't want to spend the money to live there, so I, I found my uh, stay in a, in a Yesterhus, a very simple Yesterhus, a guest house, and just a simple room with a simple bed. And even that cost more than I spent staying in Manhattan in a decent hotel just a little while later, because the currency was propped up so much, and um, I just realized right then that this cannot possibly last. I took a taxi ride even to the airport, and it was, it was so expensive, it, it, was, it was just ridiculous. It, uh, but the Icelanders thought it was uh, for real, and the economist, the Icelandic economist that I talked to, I said, you know, this is crazy, this cannot last. Oh, no, no, this is, this is a new economy, and, and uh, we're taking risk, and we're managing risk so well, and we're buying companies left and right in Norway and Sweden and England, and, it's real smart and good to, to have these companies out of uh, Reykjavik and, and to, uh, to manage them out of Reykjavik. And for, for anyone looking at this from the outside and, and being half sane, it's uh, madness, total madness. But people believed it, and um, people believed it was for real. But people are believing that all over the place, in the U.S. as well. People are believing that you know their savings are safe, that their retirement is going to be there when they grow older, that the dollars is strong and will always be strong, that real estate can never go down, they believe until very recently, but all these illusions are going to come to an end uh, and in our generation. 
So um, the kind of reality check and the kind of wake-up call that the uh, Icelanders have been uh, given is something that you know, hundreds of millions of people in the Western world, the rich world, are going to wake up to in our lifetime. So the disillusionment and, uh, and all that comes with it, the fear and the scare and seeing uh, one's savings evaporate and seeing one's uh, illusions broken is something that's going to happen to millions and hundreds of millions of people in our lifetime. So uh, really what the uh, Icelanders uh, you know, should do is to make videos like this and uh, tell the rest of the world how bad it is, how bad it has become, and what you should have done what you as an Icelander should have done. You should have realized that this was not for real. You should have diversified. You should have gotten out of the uh, over-propped up Icelandic krona. But what most Icelanders did, they had kept their money in krona and they got a high interest rate and they saved money in Icelandic whatever and they bought shares and they, they, they thought it was for real. The important thing is always to diversify. And what they should have done, of course, is especially to buy gold and precious metals. And people are not doing that, you know. So, so I wish I, I, I want to see a number of uh, Icelandic videos, and, and please do post them underneath this video, where Icelanders are looking at this and what's happened and what they should have done, and warning people in other countries in the rest of the world what they should have done and what they should do now. Um, I don't know in Iceland who has benefited from this. I, I guess some people that had uh, limited companies that they could just bankrupt and uh, take out a good salary from it and that's been living, you know. I think it's important to, to um, distance yourself from the debt and have the debt in a company so that you as a person are not hit when, uh, when the shit hits the fan. And strategies like that share these kind of strategies and of course anyone in Iceland that bought property uh, outside of uh, Iceland in, in Florida there's a lot of Icelanders that have property in Florida because uh, Iceland there has been flying to Orlando for some time um, and uh, in London and uh, stuff like that they're, they're basically uh, been able to avoid a lot of the hits so diversification is more important than ever um, as, uh, as the problems are going to come up now. And it's also interesting to see what the Icelanders will actually do now, now that the economy has collapsed. What, what will you do? What are the solutions? Who are doing well now? Are you, uh, are, are you able to come up with business models and things that actually work in such a downturn? Or, or how are you going to do it? Because Iceland is a great example in the sense that I believe that social unrest and crime will be possible to control in Iceland. I don't think Iceland is going to uh, totally collapse uh, as a society because there's such strong bonds between people. And in that sense, it's a laboratory, it's an experiment on seeing what kind of economy can be built on the uh, wreckage of a uh, fiat money propped up economy. Because, you know, when Iceland was uh, happy-go-lucky, everyone was working in banks. Everyone was taking up big loans and buying stuff from abroad and building houses and, and all. And everything was built like a hedge fund and, and, and it had to collapse and now it has collapsed. So what, what can you build upon a, uh, a economy that has collapsed? Because this will be the reality in the United States of America three, four, five years from now. It's, the, the whole thing will collapse on itself. And then people have to uh, build something from a much lower level. It, are, is it a service economy and vital basic services that's needed? Is it just food, growing food and, and serving food? What, what kind of economy... Uh, is, is really needed on this much lower plateau that the economy will eventually land on. So please, I want, I want the Icelanders to um, share their experiences as much as possible in English language uh, videos to um, help people in other countries to uh, get through the crisis that is inevitable and is coming up. You're watching Farmman TV. I'm Hans Lisklin.